It's Sunday, Sunday, January the 28th, 2024, 7.08 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. My name's Dave McRae. This is episode 238 of McRae Live. 238, uh, Sunday evening. We'll see who rolls on in tonight. Maybe a bunch of you, maybe nobody. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I wanted to jump on and uh, just give you my quick thoughts on Eli Roth's Thanksgiving. Uh, I watched it this afternoon for the first time, and uh, I watched uh, The Exorcist Believer for the first time just a couple of days ago. I do have my thoughts on my channel. Uh, I uploaded them last night. Now, again, I'm not a movie review channel, right? So if you follow me for any length of time, you know that I, I, you know, like I said in the Exorcist video, um, I don't tend to jump on the latest and greatest titles that are first released for the purposes of getting content out there because it's, I'm not a movie review channel. So it's not, it, it's not, you know, there's no expectation in order to do that. And for me, uh, sometimes it takes me a little bit to get to certain, uh, to certain titles, um, and The Exorcist Believer in Thanksgiving is no exception. Nonetheless, I finally watched Thanksgiving this afternoon. It was shot up here uh, in Canada. Uh, I believe it was shot in, I want to say Port Perry, I believe, which is just about maybe an hour and a bit away from me. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's the, you know, Port Perry stood in for Plymouth. Um, and... Um, yeah, I was looking forward to checking it out. I know they're they're you know they're going to do a sequel. Uh, it was successful, uh, certainly enough in order to do a sequel. I think it's got like eighty six percent on Rotten Tomatoes or something like that, um, something like that. And according to Box Office Mojo, uh, the according to Wikipedia, the bo the uh, the budget I believe was fifteen million. Let me just double check this here. Um, 84% on Rotten Tomatoes, uh, 15 million according to Wikipedia. So that's the production budget that wouldn't include marketing or anything like that. And the total box office was 46 million. That is domestic and international. So it grossed 31 million domestically. That's the U S and Canada and, uh, and internationally it grossed an extra 14 million. Uh, it was released. Uh, I believe this is just domestic. So this is across the U S and Canada, 3,204 theaters opening weekend was $10 million. Uh, and yeah. And so, you know, I was looking forward to checking it out, got great reviews. People seem to really enjoy it. Uh, and it's a slasher movie. Uh, and you know, one of the big things that I get asked here on the channel a lot is, do I think that we're ever going to have another slasher villain, you know, another iconic villain like Jason or Michael or Freddy or Chucky or I mean, you know, fill in the blank. Right. And my answer is always, well, I mean, it's always possible, but the landscape of horror has changed, right? You know, it's, it's, it's very rare, uh, you know, years and years ago, the slasher subgenre was extraordinarily popular. And um, generally speaking, slasher movies today, unless they are legacy sequels, sequels to proven IPs from the 80s, uh, generally go to streaming. They're B-movies. They've always really been B-movies anyway. Um, but they're more B-movies now than I think they've ever been. However, Eli Roth stepped forward last year and made Thanksgiving, which of course is based on the Grindhouse sort of trailer in, in, uh, in, uh, uh, from, I forget which one it was. Was it Death Proof or was it, uh, uh, the other one? Anyway, um, nonetheless, uh, fascinating and really cool. And so, uh, oh, there's my cat. What's going on, Veda? You coming in? You probably can't see her. She just walked by right, right back here. You can't see her because she's black. What's going on? You want to say hello to everybody? That's right. I don't know if you heard her. Um, anyway, we're, we're talking Thanksgiving. We watched that this afternoon, didn't we? Did you like it? Yeah, you thought it was all right? Okay, well, you know. Um, she thought it was all right. Uh, but here we are, of course. Um, you know, this is a new, I mean, you know, it's a, it's 
it's new, quote unquote. Um, and I know there are a lot of horror fans around the world that are huge slasher fans. And there are a lot of people that that's really all they care about, right? There's a mixed bag, right? There's people that that's not all they care about, but there's a lot of people that they are, that's their favorite subgenre of horror, the slasher subgenre. And unfortunately, when it comes to the slasher subgenre, you know, because it's not really the, like I said, unless you're doing, a, you know, think of these slasher movies that have come out recently, um, you know, that have made it to the theaters minus Thanksgiving, right? You've got Candyman, you've got Halloween, you've got Child's Play, you know, you've got the Friday the 13th remake in 09, the Elm Street remake in 10. You know, you've got like these, but they're all based on, you know, shit we've seen before, right? They're, they're legacy sequels, except for Child's Play, of course, which was a complete reboot. But nonetheless, you know the point I'm trying to make. So it's rare nowadays that you you get anything slasher related uh, that's new and that gets a, a big release and a big marketing campaign behind it. And usually they're found in the you know the basement of Netflix in the you know B C D section. Not Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving was released in over three thousand theaters. Eli Roth, of course, a name in horror, a respectable name in horror. Uh, so I was excited to check it out. So I watched it and my thoughts are, again, these are my first impression thoughts, right? You know, I'll have to watch it again, of course. But my first impression was that I thought the movie got better as it went along. Um, I thought the first half was okay. You know, I thought it was all right. Um, and then right when, um, uh, what's her name? Kathleen, the one that was cooked in the oven. By the way, spoiler alert, but what the fuck are you watching this if you haven't seen it yet? The one that got like cooked in the oven, right? From the moment that we got, when that scene began, right to the end of the movie, I actually started to really enjoy the film. And I think it's because, again, I'll have to watch it, but I think it's because it 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 felt like it, um, it felt like it, it kind of just... Uh, I say this with a little grain of salt. It felt like it began to take itself a little seriously. Uh, whereas the first half, which I really enjoyed, felt like it was just kind of winking at the audience, like, hey, we're making a, you know, one of those kind of slasher movies. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I felt sort of the, the fun, the, you know, the whimsy, the, 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 wisps of satire if you like uh, do you know what i mean like a little satirical like when that lady gets like you know and you know the lid of the dumpster comes slamming down on her and cuts her in half i i just started laughing i'm just like get the fuck out of here like that would never happen it would never happen oh it would crush her it would hurt her boom oh holy shit it wouldn't literally slice her in half unless there's like a blade there that i don't know about right so it's just little things like that where i found the tongue was firmly planted in cheek for the first half of the movie. Again, this is my first impression. Maybe I'll watch it again and maybe it, that won't be so apparent. I don't know. These are first impressions. I enjoyed it. I did. But I found myself kind of going, okay, all right, like this is kind of fun. You know, it's got a bit of a scream-ish sort of, um, and when I say scream, I mean like the 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 slightly self-aware, uh, obviously it's a whodunit, um, you know, kind of fun. It's it's fun. It's, it, it's definitely a fun movie. Um, but from the moment that, uh, is it Kathleen again? I forget her name. Anyway, the moment... The, the scene where she was being, being basted, which was really disturbing, right from that moment to the end of the movie, I found that it took itself more seriously. That doesn't mean that there weren't, you know, little crazy things, but I, I didn't find myself laughing. I found my, oh, oh, this, actually this scene here has some genuine suspense. Oh, actually this scene, the way they shot the 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 way they crafted these shots in this scene, I actually it feels like they're taking it uh, you know, seriously. 
oh, this this actually feels like more mature than the first half of the movie. Like I feel like all, not a, a different movie altogether, but just it the, the there was a little bit of a tonal shift, a little bit. I mean, you know, you get to the Thanksgiving dinner and everybody's sitting around the table, you know, tied up, and you got the you know, the woman. I mean, yeah, there's that's hard to take seriously, seriously. You know, it is it is sort of you know fun, but um. But yeah, I that's that that's my first impression. The first half is fun. I enjoyed it, but I felt the tongue r- firmly planted in cheek for the first half. I'm not saying it was a comedy. I just mean that the way that it was unfolding and sort of just the way the, you know the kills were and all this, I, you know, inventive kills. Really enjoyed it, um, but I felt I felt the satire. Uh, but the last half, I, I felt like they just you know did away with it. Not all together, but you know, uh, maybe toned it down and said, "Okay, let's just let's let's go balls to the wall and let's kind of m- make this actually somewhat legitimately disturbing." Um, and that's where I think it won me over in the end. I think if they had carried the tone from the first half all the way to the end, I might have not enjoyed it as as much. Um, but I did enjoy it. I did. Uh, I thought the kills were, you know, again, you know, the dumpster lid coming slamming down and just you know, slicing her in half. I mean, it's just, it's hilarious to me. Um, so, you know, you get things like that, right? And then, of course, you know, the head being turned around and, you know, it's it's very 80s, absolutely. Um, and, and it, you know, it, it doesn't shy away from it. Uh, and I think Eli Roth and his team should be, should be very proud of themselves. I think they delivered something that was a lot of fun, uh, that was a little old. I guess it's old school now. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, this, these, these kinds of horror movies. Um, and I can certainly see why the studio wants to do a sequel for it, for sure. Um, you know, but yeah, like, again, I'm not a movie reviewer, so I'm not going to go through the plot and the story. And if you're here, you've watched it, you've seen it. I don't need to do that. I'm just giving you my overall first impression thoughts of the movie. And I liked it. Do I need to, a sequel to it though? Do I care to see a sequel? Um, again, I'll say this for the first half of the movie. I was like, man, no, I, I, I think this is a one and done. Like it, it feels like, this is a one and done. That that's not a bad thing. That doesn't mean the movie's crap. Not all movies, you know, are that don't need sequels are crap. Uh, I'm just saying that it was it was good. It was serviceable. It was good. It's exactly what they they're not shying away from. You know, uh, what they're paying homage to. It was fun. Good kills. Uh, got a bit of that who done it scream vibe. And I'm just like, yeah, that's a fun one and done little horror movie. That that is. That, that's great. That, that was a lot of fun. Um, but once you got to the last half, I was like, okay, all right, sure, sure. Let's do a sequel. I, I mean, I don't know if it's, you know, is Patrick Dempsey really? I love at the end, though, where they focus on the firefighters that are coming out. They're wearing the masks like, oh, maybe he's one of the firefighters. Who knows, right? They're sort of foreshadowing that, setting that up, that maybe he escaped. He, uh, Who knows? I don't think, though, that... I don't think so, though. I, I I would be very surprised if when they do the sequel, if they are continuing the story with Dempsey, uh, I would be very surprised if if he ends up being one of the firefighters that were walking out of there. I think that's just a red herring. I think they're just sort of, you know, uh, trying to create like, ooh, a little bit of mystery. I wonder if that's, ooh. I don't think he's in there at all. Um, I think if he is going to come back and they want him to come back and they're going to continue sort of with a singular character, with a singular killer and not necessarily a... a uh, 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 like a different killer, like in the, you know, the scream movies, uh, then here you have an opportunity where maybe he's burned, right? He's burned. You know what I mean? And now what does that, how does that play into his disfigurement? Oh, maybe he's burned and he's coming back and now he's seeking revenge, of course, on now, he, now you could, you could steer it in a direction where you're not necessarily seeking revenge on, on the, you know, the town or whatever. There's, there's like a couple of people specifically, especially what's her face. Again, I just watched the movie today. You'll have to forgive me. <laughs> let me get the, uh, let me just get the cast up here. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, God, all their headshots look phenomenal. 
Uh, I'm not familiar with the cast enough. To, uh, Nell, Nell, who played Jessica. Uh, you know, he, he he could be coming back after after Jessica, right? You know what I'm saying? I mean, she was our, you know, in this movie, she was sort of the, yeah, you know, the final girl, so to speak. And, uh, you know, she, fuck, I mean, she's responsible for that epic explosion at the end. And there you go, right? There you go. So, um, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't... Like, I'll be honest with you, I really couldn't care less whether they made another one. Like, really, at the end of the day, I don't think the movie's that good that it won't... Whoa, like, this is phenomenal. Um, but that's not me saying the movie's bad. I'm just saying, as a horror fan, uh, I watched it and I went, yeah, this is good. Like, it's it's good. It, it knows exactly what it is. It's well done, well shot, well produced, competently made, um, and it's good. Um, and I'm like, sure. Let's do a sequel. Why not? But if they never did a sequel, I'd, I'd be okay. Like, I'm not I'm not itching for one or anything like that. But I'll be curious to see where they take the story and what they're going to do. Again, whether they're going to, uh, you know, move on to, to uh, you know, to that or, or, or not. I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, like, in terms of uh, continuing the story with Jessica and uh, the sheriff. I shot the sheriff. Um... So yeah, and then, uh, you know, I mean, favorite kills, I, I don't really have a favorite kill, I just thought the dumpster kill was just hysterical, like it, it, it almost took me out of the movie. Um, I'm glad the rest of the kills were sort of, uh, I don't, don't want to say realistic, but I, I'll say maybe um, gruesome and, and cool, but but somewhat maybe a little more traditional because I found, I just found the dumpster, I just started laughing, not in a bad way. Not in like, oh, that's such, but no, no, it's just, I was like, oh, okay, so we're doing this. So we're going now, because that was the first kill of the movie, I, I think, apart from the, the, uh, the mayhem at the, at the, uh, at the store, uh, in the beginning, which was a lot of fun, um, you know, I believe it was his his first kill, John Carver's first kill, uh, seeking uh, revenge. And I really enjoyed, you know, putting her in the water and then her face up to the freezer and all. That was really great. Oh, God, you can really kind of, you know, imagine that. That was cool. Uh, but the dumpster lid coming down and literally severing her in half, like clean, I just was like, oh, I just started, I was laughing, you know, and I was like, okay, so we're going there. Like, this is what I'm in. Like, I guess this is what I'm... Now I'm starting to sort of get myself ready to expect just kind of sensational, ridiculous kills. You know, like, um, you know, like in Friday the 13th, part eight, Jason knocks the guy's head literally off his neck. <laughs> you know, which is literally impossible. Mind you, it's Friday the 13th and everything in that series is up to that. I mean, it's Friday the 13th, it's Jay and the whole thing. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, but of course, this you expect a little more realism because it's, you know, John Carver's not supernatural and this is not built around the foundation of a supernatural character. So you're expecting somewhat of realism. Uh, and I just found that hilarious. Cool, very cool. Um, however, the rest of the kills felt a little more grounded. I mean, you had the, you know, the... 180 degree head turn with the neck and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, the rest of the kills, I mean, the circular saw and the, you know, I mean, that's to say, yeah, that's, you know, that's pretty, that's pretty slasher 101, right? You got, uh, I mean, being cooked in the oven is just, you know, it was just great. That was just great. I really liked that. That was a lot of fun. Uh, and then, of course, you know, that guy in the parade that gets, I think it was the boat, the, the, the end of the boat through the back of his net head and all, all that. It was, that was great. Like, I love that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of fun. So, you know, uh, in terms of the characters, I mean, um, I didn't find myself particularly invested in any of the characters. Um, you know, they all seemed pretty sort of kind of even keel to me. Um, but you know, I'm, yeah, I mean, it was good. It was good. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Uh, I thought, I thought it was good. And I think, you know, again, going back to the beginning of the show, when I said that I, I usually do get asked the question, um, you know, do I think we're ever going to get another Freddie, Michael, or Jason? And, you know, I, I, I you know, th that can be answered. You know, you can answer that, you know, yourselves. And, and the, like the short answer is no, no, we never will. Uh, 
um, because it's a different era, a different time period. Uh, movies are not the same anymore. The horror genre is not the same anymore. Horror has evolved. Um, the slasher subgenre is not the same anymore. And, and so will we ever have a horror slasher villain like Freddy, Jason, and Michael uh, with the same kind of slasher movies? Uh, no, no, the answer is no. And then people usually like to point to Art the Clown as an example of, well, what about Art the Clown? Well, okay, but Art the Clown is in a series of films that go to the absolute extreme uh, in order to have an effect. You know, uh, I don't know if Art the Clown, if he was in a, and again, I say this with all due respect to the to the filmmakers, is I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, it's not an attack or anything. I'm just saying, I don't know if the Terrifier films would be as popular if it wasn't for the shtick and the gimmick that surrounds them, which is going to the extreme beyond belief, crazy, exploitative, blood, guts, and gore, you know, saws and how, like it's, it's, that's why people go. Yeah. Art the Clown is cool. He's got a cool look for sure. Um, but I don't know if you stuck him in a more mainstream, uh, we'll say regular slasher movie like a Scream or a Thanksgiving or a you know Friday the Thirteenth or something. I don't know if 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 he would be as popular. Uh, you know, the, it's not just Art the Clown that people are drawn to. People are drawn to the shtick, the gimmick of these movies, which is you know uh, hardcore, exploitative, blood, guts, and gore. You know, you go for the purposes. Of, it, it's like okay, how 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 crazy is this going to be? And they're already saying that. Terrifier 3. If you thought Terrifier was crazy, wait till Terrifier 2. And then Terrifier 2 comes out. Oh, wait, if you thought Terrifier 2 was crazy, wait till Terrifier 3. They're already saying that, right? So they always have to keep upping the ante with every film that that they make because that's the identity or the, the, that's part of the identity. That That's part of why you go. Maybe it's the only reason you go. So Art the Clown is probably your closest, but it that's not that's not a mainstream slasher film, right? That is going to appeal to everybody. It doesn't have that general movie-going audience appeal. It's very specific, very niche. Uh, you know, it's like a ride at an amusement park, right? You go to the amusement park, and it's like, step right up, step right up. Let's see who cannot vomit. You know what I mean? Come on in, come on in. It's like a circus show. It's like an act, right? And again, that's not me degrading the films or the people who've made the films. I just think that uh, there is a, a shtick around it. There's a, there's a gimmick. There's a hook, right? It's not just a regular slasher movie. Uh, and I have to preface by saying that because people tend to take words out of my mouth and 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 go on social media and say, Dave McRae hates Art the Clown and Terrifier. It's like, no, I don't. That's I don't hate Terrifier at all. I don't hate Art the Clown. I'm just speaking from a objective perspective on sort of the landscape of horror and the different subgenre that Art the Clown lays in, right? It's not, it's not a general... I mean, anybody who thinks Terrifier is a general movie-going audience film has the IQ of a turnip. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Of course it's not. Of course it's not. It's not a general... That's why Damien Leone has decided to not go the studio route with Terrifier because Terrifier, because the studio who he had meetings with said, hey, listen, we'd love to do this with you, but we can't do it like this. I mean, we've got it. We, we, we have to tone this shit down to an R rating. And he's like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. And good for him. Good for him. Good for him. Good for him. So he decided to go, you know, the independent route again to do Terrifier 3 because he's already got the following. He, you know, they're going to distribute. It's going to make millions of dollars. He doesn't need them. He doesn't need them, right? But that's what I mean. That's my point, right? So um, it's, a, it's a niche sort of thing. And so I think art is the closest. I think art's the closest you're going to get. But, um, but in terms of like, you know, uh, like... The closest you're going to get to that, maybe that feeling, because I know people are crazy for art, right? Um, Thanksgiving, I think, is, you know, again, I, I, I don't know what Eli Roth is going to do with, with the sequel. Um, I don't know how he's going to up the ante or, or what he's going to do. But I will just say that I think Thanksgiving is a good movie. I had a lot of fun watching it. I don't particularly think it warrants a sequel. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm actually, I'll be honest with you, I'm a little surprised they greenlit one. Um, you know, it cost $15 million to make. They probably would have packed in, I don't know what the marketing budget would have been, but let's say another 15 mil, let's just say, right? Let's just say. So now you're at $30 million and it made 46. 
Well, now that's, so that's what? That's $16 million profit, but not really because the, you know, the theaters will take roughly 50% of that. And then of course there's your overhead and there's your interest on the money you borrow to make the movie. And so I really don't know how much the studios would have made from Thanksgiving. Um, I don't know. Maybe they made some more on PVOD and all that kind of stuff, of course. And and uh, but I, it certainly wasn't boatloads of money. I mean, it wasn't the. I mean, the first Scream film, you know, made close to two hundred million dollars at the worldwide box office in nineteen ninety six. So again, this is you know low budget, um, uh, you know. But it's. A, I mean, I guess you know it's a it's a. For a slasher horror movie, I, I would say that yeah, it's a it's a modest hit. It's a modest hit, and and I think uh, maybe they just really like working with Eli Roth, and they're like, listen, maybe I can make the sequel for the same amount. You know, listen, I'm not going to spend any more. We're going to make for 15 million, maybe 20 million the most. I think we can make more you know, the second time around because people are you know glomming onto this and getting really excited. And who knows? Who knows? Right? I'm looking forward to seeing it, but uh, but yeah, no, I thought it was I thought it was fun. I thought it was fun. I enjoyed it. Um, and, you know, is this, is John Carver the villain that all you slasher fans have been pining for? Well, that's subjective. Maybe. I don't know. I can't speak for you. But I'll just simply say that for me, no. Uh, I, I, I don't think there's a really enough meat there. But again, that's because, again, I don't want to sound like a broken record here. But again, you know, the landscape of horror has changed. You know, it's a it's it's just different now. You know, it's it's uh you know, if if it takes a terrifier type of movie to get, you know, uh horror fans to get excited about a slasher type of movie and I consider Terrifier not not just a slasher. I mean, it's more of a splatter exploitative kind of thing. And 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 I say that, you know, in in you know, um with love, I don't, you know, I don't say that as a as a negative. It it is what it is, right? Um, but it, it it seems like today it takes going to the extreme because we're so desensitized because we've seen it all that often it, it you you have to go to the extreme with a hook with an angle in order to you know stand out uh, to sort of put your head above the water and and kind of uh, because there's just it's so saturated. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I don't think so. I mean, had Thanksgiving come out in 1986, I mean, it would have been a bona fide hit. It would have been a smash. You know, you would have had a, you would put up a huge franchise. Is, is Thanksgiving going to do that? Well, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It, it, I don't think Thanksgiving was a huge smash. It wasn't. It was $15 million to make. It grossed 46, right? You know, so, you know, it was, it, 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 it wasn't a bomb, you know, but it's not like it was a, a box office smash, right? So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But uh, like I said, I enjoyed, uh, I, I, you know, the the first half I was like, eh, this is fun. This is fun. And then the second half, right from when that woman gets, you know, that scene where she's getting based and right from there, right to the very end, it, it felt like they took themselves a bit more seriously. Um, and although the tongue was still planted firmly in cheek, uh, it felt like the, it, I felt real genuine moments of suspense. I didn't quite feel, I didn't find them. Maybe that's it. I, I didn't quite find the movie scary up until that point. Now, when I say scary, what does that mean? Right. I mean, when are we ever really truly scared? Right. So when I say scary, I'm talking about because I mean, listen, I never watch a movie where I'm like, oh, 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 oh. I mean, OK, I mean, obviously. Right. You know, you take it with a grain of salt. When I say I didn't find it scary or particularly scary or, you know, I didn't find this movie particularly scary, what I'm talking about is more of, hey, I didn't really particularly find it suspenseful or there wasn't, you know, that that eeriness or that creepiness, you know, where the, it's like, ooh, I don't know what's, you know, drawing this. What I didn't, you know, it was just sort of kind of, you know, run of the mill. But the second half, I th there were a few moments where I was like, oh, this is a good scene. This is actually kind of suspenseful in this scene. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I liked it. I did. And by the way, did you guys notice Lynn Griffin? 
Lynn Griffin had a cameo at the very beginning of uh, uh, Thanksgiving. I brought up, I took a picture off uh, off the screen because uh, I couldn't screen grab it because uh, obviously with a uh, Hollywood film, they uh, don't allow you to screen grab unless you have some sort of app or something like that, which I don't have. But anyway, I took a screen grab uh, from my phone. I took a picture off the, off the screen on my phone. And uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but at the very beginning of the movie, uh, and oh, by the way, I like the way the movie opens. It's the POV. You think it's a killer walking up the steps of this house. And then the, like, I thought it, it, it felt good. It felt like, oh, this is, I like this. Anyway, there she is, Lynn Griffin playing grandma. She's playing grandma. She had a small role at the beginning of the movie and uh, that's her there. So uh, I don't know if you guys noticed that or if anybody noticed that, but uh, that's her there. So yeah, a lot of fun. And it's it's funny because um, I know I've told this before, but for those of you that may not know, when Bruce and I reached out to Lynn uh, in order to ask her if she wanted to be a part of It's Me, Billy, Chapter 2, she was on the set of Thanksgiving uh, shooting this scene uh, when she responded back to us. So, uh, I mean, not actually in the middle of shooting the scene, but I mean, she was on set that day and she got back to us and said, oh, hey guys, you know, absolutely would love to talk to you about this. Uh, I'm just, you know, on set shooting Thanksgiving. Can I give you a, you know, a ring, you know, next week, blah, blah, blah. And we're like, yeah, sure. No problem at all. So, uh, very cool indeed. And, uh, yeah, very cool indeed. And for those of you that may not know, Lynn and I have the same voiceover agent, so uh, I discovered that uh, about four years ago now, I guess, when I had Lynn on my channel when we were doing It's Me, Billy, Chapter One. She came on the channel to talk Black Christmas. And before we went live, we were talking shop about, you know, the industry and all that kind of stuff. And she had mentioned her agent. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's my agent. She's like, what? It's your agent. Yeah. So very cool indeed. We have the same voiceover agent. Anyways, that's Lynn in Thanksgiving. And you can see her later this year in It's Me, Billy, Chapter 2. Uh, so what did you guys think of Thanksgiving? What did you guys think? If you're watching live, if you're watching after the fact, well, I guess it'd be after the fact because I'm live right now. Jump into the comment section. Let me know your thoughts on Thanksgiving and anything that I had to say here today. Again, I'm not a movie reviewer, right? So I don't go through all the characters and the plot beats and the story and the, you know, uh, the good, the bad, and the best of this and the best kill. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I, I just like to jump on, give my overall thoughts of a movie I've seen. Uh, it's very unscripted. I shoot from the hip. It's just how I've always been. And uh, so, yeah, so I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. I actually thought the movie got better as it went along. And I actually enjoyed it uh, quite a bit from the moment that, uh, I think it was Kathleen, uh, the mom there, well, not the mom, I guess it wasn't her real mom, but uh, the wife of, of uh, Jenna, Jenny, Jenna, Jessica, maybe? Uh, do I still have it up here? Jessica, Ch J Jessica, yes. Uh, her dad's wife or whatever, when she was uh, fried in the, uh, <laughs> in the from... That scene when she's getting basted and she's got it, you know, she's up and, you know, John Carver's trying to find her and all, like right from that scene right to the end of the movie, I thought actually it was pretty good. Like I was like, oh, this is, I actually liked it better than the first half. Um, so I enjoyed it. Looking forward to the sequel uh, and we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what sort of longevity John Carver has, right? We'll see what sort of longevity John Carver has. If anything, maybe they'll just do a part two and that'll be it. That'll be it. Who knows? But uh, but we shall see. We shall see. Okay, let's jump over to... Uh, I know some Super Chats came in. So let's jump over to those and get those before uh, I forget. And uh, let me just um, uh, get those. Okay. And Amadusius sends in uh, $5. Thank you, Amadusius. And says, hey, man, would you ever consider a what I would have done video for The Exorcist? Would love to hear your uh, vision of a proper Exorcist sequel. Uh, maybe. Um, you know, I, I think, um, yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Uh, I haven't really thought about it. Uh, but yeah, maybe I might do that. I don't know. Um, like I said in my video, uh, yesterday that I posted, I didn't not like the movie. I thought the exorcist, the believer was fine. 
It was fine. I didn't think it was amazing. I didn't think it was like phenomenal or anything like that, but it's not the worst Exorcist movie in the franchise, okay? It's probably the third best. Exorcist, Exorcist 3, right? Or Legion. Uh, and then probably Believer because it ain't, it ain't, it ain't the heretic, I'll tell you that. And Dominion in the beginning, well, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, I thought Believer was was fine. You know what I mean? I, I, I uh, uh, anyways, I, I, I talked about it on my channel and, and uh, you can go and watch it. Um, I do have issues with it, of course. And, and I do talk about the things of, of what I think it needed to be and all that. And, and, but I, it, I, I don't think it's the catastrophic dumpster fire that the hyperbolic, you know, online fans would like you to, to think it is. I know that makes for better content and better, it would make a better video. And if I was on here all the time ranting and raving about, you know, society and wokeness and, and dog shit this and dog shit that, I'd probably have a million subscribers by now. But I got to be honest with you, right? I'm not going to come on here and bullshit you. If you think it's a catastrophic dumpster fire, all the power to you. I don't. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not what I, 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 I it had promise. It had promise. Uh, but then as once the girls were found, right, that's when we started this trajectory. It wasn't a sharp turn. It was when we, it, that's when we started this kind of down into sort of a world that I would call pedestrian supernatural, you know, movies, uh, kind of like we've seen this, been there, you know, done that. Uh, but there was some nice, nice, nice shit in that first like 30 minutes, um, but it's not, it's not, it, it's the worst movie of all. Like, I can't take these people seriously. Like, anytime I see a tweet from something, it's fucking all. I'm just like, I can't, I'm, I'm out. Like, I, I can't take you seriously. You know, like, it's just, it's just, it's just nonsense. If, if you think the, I'm not saying you have to like the exorcist believer, but if you think the exorcist believer is a catastrophic dumpster fire and one of the worst movies ever made, then you haven't seen enough movies. I'm just, I'm just saying, you got to get out more and watch more movies, man. <laughs> uh, anyways, thank you, Medusius. Nighttime sends in $5, says, I love Thanksgiving. I wanted to see it ever since the 2007 fake Grindhouse trailer, I think. Yep, Thanksgiving was uh, as good as it could have been, cheesy good. I think you're right. I think you're right, uh, Nighttime. I think that's a good assessment. I think it's as good as it it could have been, right? And it's definitely playing into a certain style of a... Um, you know, a certain style of a of a of uh, a certain type of slasher movie within the slasher subgenre. It's more Scream than it is Halloween or Friday or Elm Street, right? It's a who done it first of all. It's not a supernatural killer, although I mean, if Patrick Dempsey is all burned and it, I don't know, who knows where Eli Roth's going to take it? Um, but certainly, this is definitely more grounded, more Scream. That's why you know certain kills. I was like, what? But you know, a lot of fun. None nonetheless. Um, and I had a good time. I did. I had a good time. Eli Roth, you know, he's a, he knows his horror. He's a good director. Um, and I had a lot of fun. I did. I did. I didn't, I didn't love it. Like I wasn't over the moon over it. Uh, but I had fun. And, and to your point, I think it's as good as it could have been. I think it's what it needed to be. I thought the scene at the beginning, the, oh, and that's another thing too. You Americans, man. Now, obviously I'm not, you know, <laughs> I'm painting everybody with a broad brush. What is it? Somebody tried to explain to me. What is it? Where, like, I, I would never, I have never in my life, ever, in my life, ever wanted something so bad in my life. A PlayStation, a television, a computer, a crock pot, uh, a, a printer, uh, I don't know, yeah, a stereo. I've wanted things. I'm like, oh, I want to get that. But I've never wanted something, you know where I'm going with this. I've never wanted something so bad in my life that I would line up outside. Okay, now the lining up outside is not a big deal. But what is it where... The, I mean, I know why. I mean, I know why people are rushing in and acting like a bunch of chimpanzees, you know, at the zoo. I know why. It's because they want to get to the thing they want first before the other people do. Okay. But like, there's something very, um, I'm sorry. It's just very, 
<sighs> trash. <laughs> it's kind of trashy, you know. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you guys doing? You know, and people are on their phones. And you see people tugging on it. Give me that. People have died. People have died. People have literally, literally, that's not hyperbolic. People have literally died being trampled on at fucking Target, at Walmart for a Black Friday sale. What the fuck is wrong with this culture, man? It doesn't happen here. I know what you're thinking. Well, it's because you Canadians are too polite. Ah. Uh, I don't know. Hey, we line up. I've been downtown Toronto. I've seen the lines all around the, uh, but as soon as the doors open, they all walk in and you know, and I, I get, but I'm just like, it's the, you watch some of those like, ah, they're punching, people are punching, ah, ah, ah. like what the fuck, man? Come on. Like, I mean, nothing says, and I'm sorry. I've just got, this is just, a, nothing says trash. <laughs> more so than like, hey, I saw your dad at Walmart. Oh, did you? Yeah. He was ripping a fucking television out of this old lady's hand. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that was my dad. Yeah, that was my dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck, man? You know, because here's the crazy thing. You wait two weeks. You wait two weeks, you can walk into the same store and buy it. No problem. And there's nobody around. I know. They want it for Christmas. That's what it is, right? I has gotta have it for Christmas. It's gotta be under the tree. It's gotta be under the tree. It's like, well. Why don't you put an eye? Listen, I would rather I'd rather put like a fucking, hey, I'll get this for you in January. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just like, what the fuck? Like, I just, listen, if you're, if you're somebody who's done that, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to insult you. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I just, I've seen the videos on YouTube and I'm just like, what? Like, I, I can understand you're excited. People are lined up. You, you know, the doors open. I can understand rushing in. I've seen it here in Canada, right? The, the doors open to Best Buy or to Walmart or wherever, right? And I, I've seen people rush in and they pick up the carts and, oh, you know, but it's more of a fun kind of thing. It's like, oh, I hope I, but son, and again, I, I'm not, I'm not saying it's, you know, an American thing. I'm just saying that you, you see these videos coming out of the States and, and it's, and I'm sure it's elsewhere in the world too. I'm sure you, you I'm sure you could probably bring up a video somewhere here in Canada where it's happened as well. Uh, but you see it, you know, it's, it's stereotypically, it's, it's, you know, you see it coming from the U S right. And it's like, wow, man, I've never, never in my life have I ever wanted something so bad that I was willing to actually a risk my life for it uh like literally uh and 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 b be in a situation especially today right i mean maybe if this was the 80s nobody i mean i mean you, you weren't being captured by any cameras now everybody's got a cell phone and they're shooting stuff and they're shooting video and you know and 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 i mean the could you imagine you know, you're watching a video and there I am, there I am, right? I'm taking something out. There I am. There, there's Dave McRae, you know, at Walmart. Ah! Give me that! Ah, you fucking, ah, give me the fucking thing! I was here first! I was here first! It's my television! And then, you know, I come on. Oh. Sorry about that. I come on here, right? I come on here, you know, and, and you guys are like, hey, Dave, uh, is this, dude, is this you? No, no, that's not me. That's not me. You know what I mean? Like, God, everybody, you're always on camera now all the time. It's not just, the, you know, the security cameras in the stores. Everybody's got a phone and all that kind of shit, you know? And so anyways, great opening scene in terms of the, not opening scene, but the, you know, the opening with the mall of the, the, the store, the right mall or right mart or whatever you know and all like i i love the satirical play on that right because they they were heavily leaning into that but what you're seeing for those of you that may not know what you're seeing in that opening scene has actually happened now i don't know if somebody's actually had their scalp ripped apart but people have been trampled on and died can you imagine like 
it's wild to me, wild to me. So I really did uh, like that scene. I thought it was a lot of fun because it's like, yeah, that is like, I would never, never. I would just be like, hey, little Johnny. Nope. But I want a PS5. Well, then you can fucking wait till January when they're restocked and nobody's there. Nobody's there. I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather give you a little IOU in the form of a Christmas card, you know, and, and, and I would, I, it's no way, man, no way am I going to be in there going, ah! <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny. Uh, all right. Anyway, let me continue here. Um, uh, Nighttime uh, follows up on the $5, says, Also, I haven't seen a psycho killer jump through a wall like that since Jason in Friday the 13th when John Carver jumps through a wall, jumps through a wall, jumps through a wall. I just watched the movie a couple hours ago. I can't remember him jumping through a wall. Uh, I can't remember, but I'll take your word for it. Um, I'm sure he did. I just can't remember it. Um, Lee the Machine Bauer sends in a very generous super chat. Thank you, Lee. I really appreciate that very much, man. Says, Dave, my man, I watched Thanksgiving last night. Ah, I just watched it this afternoon. It's enjoyable. There's no reason for a sequel. I feel the movie is one and done for me. Cheers. Hope you're doing well, my friend. Well, thank you, uh, Lee. Really appreciate that. Yeah, I think, um, I don't like, again, I mean, I, I don't... Uh, I understand why. I do understand why. And I am very curious to see where Eli Roth is going to take it, for sure. Um, you know, is it, are we going to follow the same girl? And is it going to be Dempsey? That's the, you know, the sheriff. And he's burned now. And what, how does that play into his new look and all that kind of stuff? Who knows? Who knows? I mean, although I thought Thanksgiving was good, I had a lot of fun with it. I thought it was a lot of fun. It was very good. Uh, made me smile. Um, and yeah, I, I, I didn't like it enough where I'm like, oh yeah, I want to see more of John Carver. However, because there is a sequel and they're going to make one, this is Eli Roth's opportunity to, you know, maybe, you know, flesh things out a bit more. And, and I'd like to see. I'd like to see a sequel that is more in line with the last half of Thanksgiving in terms of tone. Uh, make something really disturbing, create something really disturbing, but 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 maybe take the tongue out of the cheek a little bit. You know, you've done that and you've set it up, but maybe deliver something that's like really, you know, like a wow, this is do you know what I mean? Like like you there's almost like a nice tonal shift where it feels more serious. I don't know if that's if if that's the right way to go or if that's going to feel awkward because of where he, you know what we did with the first one. I don't know, but I'm curious to see what he's going to do for sure. I'm curious to see what he's going to do. Uh, and then member chat from Evil Monsterism says, "Dave, you, uh, Dave, how are you, my man? If Donald Pleasance hadn't passed away, what do you think they would have done with him in in some of the later sequels?" Well, not too much because Donald Pleasance was already about 75, <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, by the time H2O would have come out, he would have been 80. So I, I, I think anyway, let me just see here. Uh, Donald Pleasance. Uh, let's see, he was born in 1919. Yeah, so 1919, 71, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, he was 75, almost 76. He was going to turn 76 that year. So, you know, 76, 78. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he would have been like 80, 79. I don't know. I, I um, uh, and he wasn't in the greatest health in Halloween 6. So, Let's just put it this way. They had to shoot around Donald Pleasance a lot in Halloween 6 because of his health, right? That's why he wasn't, whether the, I know he's in a bit more of the producer's cut, but that's why he wasn't really in on the action action uh, to any big degree in either the producer's cut or the theatrical cut because he had ailing health, you know? And so um, I would say that, you know, fast forward four more years and here you are now shooting Halloween H2O. If he was in that, he would have been in worse health if he would have been alive. And but let's say he was, I think he would have been more of the same. I think he just would have been like an Ellen Burstyn sort of thing in, in The Exorcist, right? You know, and, and, and it, w it would have been kind of, you know, you go to him, he's that guy you go to and, you know, for the advice and he tells you all about Michael and he sets you on your path and then you go on. You know what I mean? Like he, he, he would have been delegated to that kind of role. Uh, and then, I mean, would he have been around and, 
you know, for he would not have been the star. Let's just put it that way. He 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 would not have been the star. No way. His health was too bad. Uh, member chat from Sean Sheridan says Thanksgiving was a silly but fun movie I think you are right Michael, Freddie, and Jason were icons because of the icon status of slashes in the 80s horror has moved on since well yeah and, and they're, it's, it's a cultural thing right they've, they've, they've surpassed because of the era and because of where horror was at that time because of the, the gigantic uh, you know uh, um, the 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 you know, the the slasher sort of the golden age of slashers and, and where horror was, where the industry was, where pop culture was at that time. Um, you know, th they are, they define a generation, right? Freddie and Jason more than Michael. Again, Michael doesn't really, you know, I, I wouldn't say that Michael defines the 80s. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't even necessarily say he defines the 70s. He's there. He's a part of it. But Michael had, a, I've said this many times, Freddie and Jason are 80s cultural, pop culture icons. Michael Myers is an icon. He's a pop culture icon. But his path to that was very different. Because obviously the last time we saw him was 1981, and then we didn't see him again until 1988. That, 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 that's a, I mean, it's nearly the end of the, we saw him at the beginning of the decade, and then again at the end of the decade, right? So in between that, you know, the years, 82, 3, 4, 5, 6, I mean, it was Freddie and Jason, Jason and Freddie, Freddie and Jason, Jason and Freddie, Freddie and Jason, Jason and Freddie. And so they ended up helping to define an era and define a generation. They, they surpass uh, the genre that they're in and into the pop culture zeitgeist. So, you know, they're on the lunchboxes and they have the cartoons and they have the video games and the cereals and the, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, which again is another thing that I talk about Art the Clown. You know, I say, people often say, well, he's, he's an icon like them. And I'm like, no, he's not. That doesn't mean that he will never be. I said, uh, but Art the Clown is, you know, we'll see how Terrifier 3 does. He certainly carved a path for him uh, as a horror icon at the moment. Uh, I don't like to give the words icon or, or the labels icon and legend uh, too early. Uh, I think we overuse them to, uh, I think we use them uh, prematurely when something is very popular. Right now, Art the Clown is very popular. Right now, Terrifier is very popular. But I like to reserve labels like icon and legendary for uh, longevity. Um, because Art the Clown, Terrifier 3 could bomb, we don't know, could, could be absolutely catastrophic. It could be a catastrophic dumpster fire, who knows? I'm not saying it will be, I'm just saying, we don't know, right? So... And if it is, oh, uh, uh, how does that, you know, what happens? And five years from now, we could not be talking about him anymore. And so I'm not saying that is going to happen. I'm just saying these are the realities that every horror villain, every property, every movie, every franchise, every character, whatever, they, they all face this. And Art the Clown is no different. So I'm always, I never like to put labels on things. But is he extraordinarily popular right now in the world of horror? Yes. Is he on t-shirts and are people doing artwork and getting tattoos? And yes. Was he knocking on the pop culture door? So when I say pop culture zeitgeist, I'm talking about, you know, uh, uh, surpassing the threshold of his own genre, right? Like a Freddy and a Jason. So, you know, when you have Howard Stern talking about Terrifier or you have The View making a mention of Terrifier, that's knocking on that pop culture door. Now you're 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 crossing into the zeitgeist. Um, but in order to stay there, uh, that's something different. People can come in and out all the time. Lots of characters, lots of movies come in and out and in and out and in and out. But to stay there is different. And I don't know. Freddie and Jason define a generation. They define a generation. They define an era. You know, it's, 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 it's why you see, you know, it's, it's why you will often see, uh, you know, when you look at movies that are doing period pieces that take place in the eighties or, you know, you see a collage of like eighties things, you know what I mean? Like an eighties pop culture collage. And you'll see like Bruce Springsteen and back to the future and Spielberg and ET and, and more often than not, you'll see a Jason mask or a Freddie glove or, you know, whatever it is, right. They define define a decade they define a generation and that's because they surpass their the 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 popularity of their own genre into the zeitgeist forever 
And and I don't know if Art the Clown would be defining the 2010s. You know, I don't know if 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 the entertainment industry did a pop culture collage of the 2010s, you'd see Art the Clown. Maybe, maybe, but it wouldn't surprise me if you didn't, uh, right? I don't think he's there yet. And and I you know labels like Goat and Legendary and you know Iconic they have meanings they have they mean something and when we are too premature to put labels on like Goat and Legendary and and you know Iconic on things that w that are just really popular um, then it just waters down and diminishes the value and the meaning of that word. Right, and it's tossed around in the world of fandom like it's nobody's business. Um, in my opinion, Art the Clown is not iconic, and he's not legendary. Not yet. Uh, there needs to be. I think the jury is still out. He's on his way. It's like deeming, you know, uh, uh, Tom Brady after his first season legendary. I.e., he's iconic. He's the goat. He's legendary. Well, hang on a sec. He's great. He's great, but can we reserve? Let's see how his career plays out, right? Now, after what, six Super Bowls, the most this, the, all these, you know, uh, records, and I'm not saying you've got to get to Tom Brady status in order to be, but I'm, I'm going to the extreme to make a point. But now we can look back and go, yes, he's the greatest quarterback of all. He's iconic. He's the GOAT. He's, you know, whatever the case is. But why the hell would we put that label on him after the first two or three seasons? He's great. He's popular. Let's see where his career goes. So for me, Art the Clown is cool. He's popular. He's resonating with a lot of people. Let's see where his career goes. Let's see how this plays out. And let's see how history treats that character. And so it's very much the same way with Thanksgiving, right? You know, and we'll see how history treats John Carver and where and where that goes. So uh, that's how I feel about those things. And and you know, I'll often get. Uh, 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 I mean, it's it's usually from people that don't know their asses from their elbows, and they can't. You know, they don't understand nuance at all, right? But you know, I will often say things like, "I've just, I have, I believe anyway, I have clearly communicated a a uh, um, uh, clear." and objective, rational argument to why I feel the way I do. And so there should be nobody out there that is saying that, you know, you just hate Art the Clown, which is not true at all. I think he's a cool character. Uh, it's not my kind of movies because I'm not into that kind of horror, but I recognize the significance he's had and the popularity he's had and the following he has for sure. And I know a couple of the guys that made the movie. So, you know what? You got to give credit where credit is due, man. And you got to respect the hustle. Not my kind of horror movie, but there's a place for it. It's popular and I wish them the best of luck. I hope I hope they continue to succeed. And I genuinely mean that because, you know, you raise things up. It can raise other people up too, right? But uh, I'm not somebody that likes to put these labels on things prematurely. You know, it's like putting, you know, it's like going back to 1996 and after the first scream saying Ghostface is iconic, Ghostface is legendary, Ghostface is, you know, one of the greats of all time. What the fuck are you talking about? I was around in 1996. I was 17. And I can tell you nobody was saying that. It was just this movie called Scream that was really cool and popular. Okay, cool. You know what I mean? And it was big and it was popular, but nobody was like, oh, he's the greatest of all time. No, it, it was too new. It was, it, the jury was out. He had one great season. Okay, let's see how this goes. <laughs> You know what I mean? Now you can look back because, you know, at the whole thing and wow, you know, amazing, right? So that's how I feel about it anyway. That's how I feel about it. Uh, Josh McKenna sends in 999. Thanks, Josh, and says, I liked watching your thoughts on The Exorcist Believer. I appreciate you're always honest and, f and form your own opinions. I've liked movies that are popular to hate. Yeah, I appreciate that, Josh. Uh, thank you. Well, you know, I, I mean, again, it's, it's I, you know I'm always going to be honest here. Uh, I'm not afraid. I, I don't... Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm not my, again, if I actually was somebody, and it's not that I can't be controversial, it's not that I can't go on some great rants, it's not that I, you know, don't have a difference of opinion, you know, to, to, to others, because I can, but I'm not here to, to uh, build a community of confirmation bias and groupthink and just tell you what you want to hear. If you agree with me, that's great. If you don't agree with me, 
that's okay too. Um, and but I'm not just going to recycle what I think you know, you want to hear. I, I got to tell you how I feel. That's why I wasn't afraid to come on here and tell you how I thought about Barbie, right? I really enjoyed the movie. I thought it was good. I thought it was really good, you know, and, and, and I'm not afraid to say that, right? You know, so um, so that should tell you anything, you know, I'm, not, I'm a huge fan of Avatar, one of my favorite movies of all time. I'm an unabashed fan. Of, I love it. It's great. And that appears to not be the popular thing to say. So, you know, I don't care. I have to be honest with how I feel about it. Because um, if I'm not, then what the fuck am I doing, right? I hope you tune in to hear what I have to say. And you, you know, if you agree with me, amazing. If you don't, that's okay. But there's too many channels out there that, that um, you know, aren't honest because they don't want to lose viewers or they don't want to make people mad or you know what I mean? It's like, listen, I have 29.2 thousand subscribers. Okay. You know, I mean, I'd probably have a lot more, a lot more if I decided to structure this channel a bit differently, but I can't do that. I have to be honest with how I feel. If I started doing videos on wokeness and snow white and I mean, Jesus, I, you know, basically manufactured outrage. That doesn't mean that a lot of those channels that do that don't have valid points from time to time, or maybe even a lot of the time, but I just couldn't live in that world. You know, I, I see some of the things and I, I, I can get like, fuck, you can't, I mean, two, I can get that too, but I can't imagine dedicating an entire channel. Oh, hell. I mean, maybe if I was raking in thousands of dollars a month, Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? But uh, but I can't imagine dedicating my life to just being angry all the time. You know, ah, well, can you believe they're doing this now? You know, and it's like, God, it's like all those, it's crazy to me. It's just like, do you ever talk about anything you do like? <laughs> you know, I don't know. But that's me. Thanks, Josh. Daniel Harrell sends in four ninety nine. says, no question today, Dave. Just uh, showing some love. God bless, bro. Hope all is well. Thank you, Daniel. I really appreciate that. I hope you're doing well as well. Uh, Diamond Rattler sends in $5 and says, is It's Me, Billy going to be available on Blu-ray? Do you mean uh, the first It's Me, Billy or the second It's Me, Billy? Uh, the first It's Me, Billy is uh, on Blu-ray. You can purchase it via uh, the Indiegogo campaign. Uh, you can actually get both. Uh, the Indiegogo campaign for Chapter 2 is still available. The link is in the description. Uh, we're offering uh, It's Me, Billy Chapter 1 and Chapter 2 on Blu-ray um, for, uh, it's called, uh, the perk is called double blue. So you can get both of them on Blu-ray and that's how you get them. Now, obviously, because we don't own the intellectual property, we don't own the IP, we can't sell them for profit, right? I mean, we can, we could probably sell some to, to help us pay for, uh, <laughs> uh, some of the things that, that, uh, come with post-production, uh, but we can't sell it. Like I can't put it in Walmart, you know, or something like that, or you can't get it on like Amazon or something. Uh, we can't do that. We're not allowed to do that. Legally, we're not allowed to do that. Um, but we are allowed, we are allowed, of course, to sell it as part of our campaign uh, to help raise money for the movie. And, and uh, the campaign is in demand and it's still there. And folks, I mean, hit that link. There's still one associate producer perk left. If you want to be an associate producer on It's Me, Billy Chapter 2, there's one left and it's there. It's just waiting to be eaten. I can't believe it still hasn't been eaten yet, but uh, it's there. Uh, and other things, you know, Blu-rays, uh, hoodies, T-shirts, they're there as well. So uh, check out the um, uh, the campaign. Edward Nito. Hey, Edward, I haven't seen you in a while. One of our great channel members sends in a member chat, says, Sup, Dave, it's been a while, man. Hope you're doing well. I've obviously seen Godzilla Minus One, and it's close to my favorite now. Have you seen it yet? I'm not excited for the Mossiverse, though. I have yet to see Godzilla Minus One. It is on the list. I just recently saw The Exorcist Believer. I have to see, uh, I just watched Thanksgiving this afternoon. I still have to see Godzilla Minus One. So, uh, soon, soon, soon. But, Great to see you. Thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by. Cody Snyder, one of our great moderators, sends in a member chat and says, Dave, uh, Dave, tell them the story about the two guys fighting over toilet paper during the pandemic because I take big shits. I take massive big shits. Oh my God, Cody, you remember that? Yeah, so that was, um, that was uh, in 2020, uh, probably like March or April of 2020. Do you remember when there was like the, the toilet paper shortage? People were like buying up toilet paper. Like it was like, I don't know, there was like a diarrhea pandemic or something. And I remember being at the grocery store 
do you guys call it the grocery store? Maybe it depends on the state, uh, the, the state, the grocery store, the supermarket. We don't really call it a supermarket. We usually just call it the grocery store. Uh, anyway, <laughs> nonetheless, I was at the grocery store and, um, uh, I was, I can't remember if I was there to buy toilet paper if I was, or if I was just there grocery shopping, but I heard this, this fight break out in the toilet paper aisle. And yeah, there was this guy that, that, that took like, like a fucking the black Friday thing, blah, blah, took this, uh, toilet paper out of this guy's hands. And he's like, he's like, I need this. He's like, why is it? I need this because I take shits. I take big, massive shits. And that's what he said right there in the grocery store. Lots of people around right under his mask. I take big masks on shits. Actually, he might not have had a mask on because I don't think they were mandatory at that point. I think they became mandatory that summer, but um, I just thought it was the funniest thing of all time. I don't know if he was serious, but you know, you got to give credit where credit is due. I mean, the guy, he needed it because he took big, massive shits. So, you know, yeah, I'll never forget that. Really, really funny. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, Emma Ducia sends in a member chat says, Dave, on average, two to three people die every year on Black Friday due to being trampled on. That is crazy to me. Uh, us Americans have a bloodlust for a sale. Pathetic, but true. Everybody likes a sale. I like a sale, but I would never risk my life or I'm, it's just not my style. Uh, l l Let's take the risking life out of it. Let's say there was no risk to your life. It's just not my style to line up outside for all hours. And then when the doors open to sprint and rush in over to, it's just, it's just not my style. I just, I couldn't care less. It's just not my style. I literally, and I mean this, I literally like, like, let's say I wanted a PS5, which I do, by the way. I'd love to have a PS5. I don't have one. I, I have to get one, but I don't have one. But let's say I wanted a PS5, right? And, uh, and you know, they come out. They're out. They're, they're out. They're hot right now. They're out. I don't give a fuck how bad I want it. I would not wait outside Best Buy starting at, like, you know, like two days before. that. I just wouldn't do that. I just, I, I don't understand. I've, I guess I've never wanted to, I've never wanted something bad enough where I'm willing to do that. I would literally rather, I would rather, and, 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 and I mean this, as bad as I want it, I would rather wait six months, a year, however long it fucking takes for them to restock so I can walk in on a Sunday afternoon in July <laughs> nobody around and just walk up to the clerk and go, uh, yeah, could you open the cabinet there? I'd love to get that PS5. Sure. No problem, sir. Okay. There you go. Thank you very much. I pre I totally, it's worth it for me. It's worth it. I am not going to be caught running around a fucking Best Buy. <laughs> like, it's just like, nah, I'm out. I'm 45, man. Like, fuck that. <laughs> no. And I know there are people my age that do it and older. I'm just saying that I'm like, no, nah, I'm, I'm out. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Uh, Lee, the machine Bowers, another generous super chat. Thank you. Lee sends in $20 says, Dave, we need a movie about people fighting over toilet paper. How crazy would that movie be? And will you, and you'll have to star in it with you and your shopping cart. Hey, I'd be more than happy. If somebody wants to make a, a attack of the killer toilet paper, or whatever the case is, I'd be I'd be more than happy to do that. More than happy to do that. Uh, okay, and then the last super. Ch oh wait, no, I just want to make sure I get them all. Nighttime two dollars saw Blumhouse's Night Swim. Now Believer is amazing. <laughs> I haven't seen Night Swim yet. I'd like to see it. Uh, and then you follow follow up with Dave. Do yourself a favor. Do not see Night Swim. No, I'll I'll always I'll see it. I'll check it out. I'll check it out for sure. But again, it's not something that I that I would go to the theater to see or anything like that. You know what I mean? But uh, it is what it is. Uh, hey, Happy Sanjo just became a, 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 a or a, yeah became or returned signed back up to level number two. Thank you very much, Happy. Appreciate that. Um, okay, let me see if I can get some. Okay, have I missed the super chats? That's the question. Have I missed any? I don't believe I have. I just want to make sure. 
I don't believe I have. So let me go back over and uh, we'll take this thing to, uh, now we'll go another, uh, another 20 minutes or so. Uh, let me go back. I want to see if anybody else is talking about Thanksgiving. Um, da -da 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 -da. Wayne says, after being subbed for six years, thank you, Wayne, I realize Dave will never be fully satisfied with a theatrical release horror film. Should watch Saw X, though. So, Wayne, what do you mean by fully satisfied? What do you mean by fully fully satisfied? Uh, does that mean that... Um, I come on here, like what's the litmus test, right? Is it that I come on here and I'm like, dude, I just fucking saw this. It was amazing. Fucking loved it. Fucking loved it. Thought it was great. Thought it was great. Is that what you mean? Or do you mean that, uh, do, you, do you think it appears that I always, L look, I, I mean, here's the thing, right? My standards are very high and I've never shied away from that. Most of the horror movies that come out during the mainstream, I, I, I'm just like, meh, it's fine, you know? And there, there's a variety of reasons for that, right? So one of the reasons is that um, my tastes have changed over the years. Um, some people get locked into a certain kind of space, like, you know, with Saw X, right? I could probably watch Saw X and you're right. I would probably think it was, it was all right. It's fine. It's good right? Um, but it takes a lot for me to be like, wow, right? But I can tell you some, some horror films where I was like, wow. I don't know if they, they were theatrically re uh, released, uh, but certainly um, uh, The Ritual, thought that was fantastic. Uh, the Night House, thought that was great. Hereditary, I thought was great. I think what tends what tends to happen though, Wayne, is that it's like the quote that John Carpenter said. And and again, this is all subjective, right? You know, I mean, what I like, you may not, what you like, I may not. Do you know what I mean? Um, but like John Carpenter said years and years ago, more most horror movies are garbage. Now, obviously he's being a bit hyperbolic, but the point he's making is is horror movies get turned out like crazy because they're very easy to make low budget and there's a vast the 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 spectrum is vast in terms of quality and so the vast majority of horror movies will be garbage and then you get some that are pretty good and then you get even less that are really good and then you get like a handful that come along every once in a while that are fantastic right but it all depends on what you're expecting me to to say Right, because you know, I I think I've always been very fair. You know, it again. I I am I'm 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 tough to please. I am, uh, but it, it's it's because I've seen it all. You know, and and so and, and I tend to and especially when it comes to horror, I'm 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 tough, but I'm not the toughest either. You know, I probably could be tougher. I probably could be tougher. Um, but when it comes to like, you know, Thanksgiving, I thought it was good. It was fine. You know, I, I didn't think it was anything to rave about, you know, and, and I thought the Exodus Believer was, was actually not as bad as people said it was. Not even close. Um, I didn't think it was great. I'm just saying that I didn't think it was catastrophic. Um, so I think it, it, it you know, Saw X, uh, I mean, I've only seen the first three Saws. So the, the very first saw I really like a lot. I thought it was fantastic. Um, but saw X I've heard great things about, but you're, but you're right. There's a, probably a high probability that I'd watch it and go, yeah, I thought it was all right. That was pretty good. But you have to keep in mind too, that I'm also not emotionally attached to the franchise, right? It's like scream. I'm not emotionally attached. And when you're not emotionally attached, you're not emotionally invested, you know, into certain franchises you watch a movie and you go that yeah, was good i enjoyed it you know and and that's just what it is it just kind of it's good i enjoyed it but it doesn't knock my socks off it takes a lot for a movie to knock my socks off it really does it really does it's it's very rare like there's that movie incident in a ghost land that i thought was fantastic 
And yet it doesn't get enough love. I don't think not enough people have seen it. Um, you know, and here I, and I did a video on it and I had people going, yeah, I saw it. Yeah, it was okay. Different, different strokes for different folks. And yet I thought incident in a ghost land was great. I was like, oh, that was really good. I love the twist. I love the narrative, the angle, what they were doing. I thought the acting was fantastic. I really enjoyed that movie. Really enjoyed that movie, you know? So that's something I've talked about here on the channel, right? Now, I know you said theatrical release films, um, but I think that's because a lot of the theatrically released horror movies are just not very good, Wayne. You know, in the, in the, at least not good enough for me to take a stance where I'm like, that was amazing. You know what I mean? That's for me though. That's for me. Um, all right. Uh, another 15 minutes or so. Let me see here. Um, ba 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 ba, beep, 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 beep. Brandon Collins sends in $2. Thank you, Brandon. Says, no one is ever fully satisfied. Ask my ex-wife. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Brandon will be here all week. Tip your wages at the door. Uh, Davey Deathray says, guys, I'm picking between two horrors I have not seen for later tonight. Which one should I watch? Barbarian or Talk to Me? Ooh, I don't know. It's a good question. I mean, both if you can, but uh, I don't know. Which one did I like more? I don't know. I don't know. I liked both movies. I did. I liked Barbarian and I liked uh, Talk to Me. I thought they were good. I thought they were good. Uh, Mike Mullen sends in $10 Super Chat. Thank you, Mike. Says, hey, Dave, I loved Thanksgiving. It was a fun movie. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I did. I liked the cast. Um, I liked the cast. I can't wait to see what cooks, what, what they cook up. That's right, for part two. I'd love you to discuss some early 90s thrillers. Yeah, I might do that. Uh, there's a few that, that I could probably talk about, like The Hand That Rocks the Cradle and Shattered and, uh, you know, Sleeping with the Enemy. And, and uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of good ones out there uh, for sure. So maybe that's something I'll do in the future. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I liked Thanksgiving. I did. I did. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Um, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to... Be. I thought it was amazing! Well, <laughs> I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. Um, mama, mama, beep, ba, ba, boo, boop, ba, da, ba, ba. Uh, okay, let me just scroll back and see. Um, I'm just scrolling back. Mm hmm. Ba, 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 ba. Aaron Click says, I do remember Scream being seen as a game changer even back in 1986, though my friend group, uh, though, uh, my friend group all thought it would be a horror classic. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on the, on the, on the people. I guess what I'm saying is, is that, you know, when a movie comes out, it was big, it was big. Um, but in its immediacy, you know, it's not like, uh, Ghostface in its immediacy is, is, uh, you know, is a, is a classic character that comes with longevity that comes in time because there has to be time for Ghostface to exist in the pop culture and to make it to the t-shirts and make it to the talk shows and make it to the lunch boxes and make it to the cereals and make it to the shelves for Halloween and make it, it takes that time. Right. And then it needs to stay there. Right. Cause it could be there maybe after the first year, but then is it there the second year or the third year, you know? And then, so I would say that, that it, it, it didn't solidify itself in 1996. It, it was a big movie and there was a lot of potential, but there's a lot of big movies with a lot of potential that never see the light of day. So for me, I remember Scream being a big movie. I remember it being popular and I remember people going to see it and liking it. Um, but it, it really, for me anyway, I, I, uh, more remember it as, uh, uh, yeah, more more that it, it spawned sort of it, it rejuvenated the the slasher subgenre in the late '90s, um, and then I think in retrospect, you know, somewhere around the early 2000s, you look back on Scream One, Two, and Three, and you're like, oh wow, it's really become it's really solidified itself as a as a as a as a mainstay as a as a real sort of juggernaut in these in the slasher subgenre. 
Um, Davey Deathray just gifted five memberships. Amazing, Davey. Thank you so much for doing that, man. You did not have to do that. Thank you. He gifted a membership to Melissa, to Nathaniel Fincher, to Brian Kendrick, to Zach Axiola, and to Evil Alex. Amazing. Thank you so much, Davey. Really appreciate that. Unbelievable. Happy Sanjo sends in $2, says, you seen, uh, have you seen Bone Tomahawk with Kurt Russell? I have not. I have not. I know the movie you're talking about, though. Simon Mills sends in a, uh, a member chat. Thank you, Simon. Says, Dave, check out where evil lurks. Then you have a horror movie that will blow your mind. Just ask TSL lads. I uh, have not seen the movie yet, but I know all about where evil lurks. I know all about how popular it is. I know all about the hype surrounding it. Um, it's just uh, not one that I have uh, yet to see. However, uh, I definitely do want to see it. Uh, it is on the list. There's no doubt about it. It is, it is on the list. I definitely want to see that. Uh, Mike Mullen follows up with another $10 super chat. Thank you, Mike. Says, uh, off topic, I know, uh, I know, but have you ever seen Copycat with Sigourney Weaver? I have not seen Copycat with Sigourney Weaver. No. But I, again, I do know the movie that you're talking about. Hmm. But no, I have not seen it. Uh, I've, I'd like to see it, though. Let me just close these. Uh, tabs, all these tabs open. All right. Lewis the Killer says, I love Thanksgiving. Best movie of last year. See what I mean? See how everybody, it's fascinating. And that's what's so great about movies, right? Because I would not say that Thanksgiving was the best movie of 2023, but Lewis the Killer's like, nah, dude, you know what? To me, it's the best movie of 2023. And that's awesome. That's, that's what's so great about it, right? That's what's so cool about it. Lee the Machine Bowers comes in again with a very generous super chat of 1999. Thank you, Lee, and says, Dave, what are your thoughts on Alien Romulus coming out August 16th, 24? I don't really have any thoughts. I don't know a lot about it. Um, I do know that I believe it's a direct sequel to Aliens, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I don't, I don't know. It's a that's a very good question. Um I'm not really up on it, uh, and I'm not entirely sure. So uh, I'm not a big Alien franchise fan. I, I just, I don't know. You know, to me, the long, I, I don't care how good the franchise was in the beginning. To me, the longer a franchise goes on, I just lose interest. You know, I just lose interest. And, and my taste in horror has changed. Like now, for me, I'm not a, I'm not a bit, like I like the slasher subgenre. I do. But I think because of my age and because things have changed so much in the world of horror, I tend to be, you know, I'm more of a nostalgia slasher fan. So I like watching all the old Halloweens or the Elm Streets or the Friday the 13th or, you know, Black Christmas from 74 or, you know, The Burning or, you know, what have you, right? I tend to always revisit the old stuff, not necessarily the new stuff. My taste in horror now is... Well, I mean, you guys know I'm the mood, the atmosphere, the psychological. Um, you know, it's. It, I mean, that's that's what it's me, Billy is, right? You know, it it it's it, it's cut from that cloth of storytelling. You know, that's what Chapter Two is as well. I mean, Chapter Two is really just the end of Chapter One, <laughs> or, or the end of the of the of the movie. It's not its own separate film altogether. It it picks up immediately immediately where we left off, and then just kind of you know goes into the climax. Um, but but that's where I am. Like movies like The Night House and and uh, you know Hereditary and The Ritual and and I have no doubt that where, you know where evil lurks or wh when evil lurks wherever it lurks. I, that that just watching. I'm like yeah. Like this is my kind. of, That's what gets me excited. It doesn't mean I can't watch a fun modern slasher like Thanksgiving and enjoy myself. But I don't think where I am in my life at you know in my mid forties now. I don't think I'm ever going to be in a position like I was when I was a teenager or a young boy growing up through the eighties, when slashers dominated for the most part, mainstream horror, um, and for the most part. And, uh, where I was like, Aah! yeah, like I feel I'm just like, I'm not there anymore. Um, and that's not me saying that I'm better than anybody who is there. That's not me. I'm just talking about me and how my tastes have evolved and changed over the year, you know, um, over the years and, and, and how horror has evolved as well. So 
you know, uh, well, like, you know, the, the first insidious or the, the first, the conjuring or, or, uh, uh, what's that one? Uh, um, Oh God, the one with Ethan Hawk. Um, uh, I was blank on it. Uh, not slither. Uh, 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 the fuck's the one with Ethan Hawk 2012. Um, I know it starts with an S the chat room's gonna let me know. I always blank on this for some reason. Fuck. Chat room will come in with it. Not slither, but but uh, sinister. Thank you, thank you. Evil monsterism, sinister. Yes, the first sinister. You know the mood, the atmosphere, the eeriness. Like I love that. I don't care if there's blood in a horror movie at all. I really don't. I really don't. I could not care less. I could not care less if it's in the movie and it serves the film and it makes sense to have blood here, I'm totally fine with it. But like, I don't care, man. Like, I mean, I'm like the first ring, right? The first, the ring from 2002. I still think it holds up today. It's eerie and creepy and uncomfortable and weird. And I just, I love, that's where I am with horror. That's right with horror. And, um, but it's, it's just my taste. So if I ever, have an opportunity, and I hope I do, to uh, go and make a feature film um, and make a horror movie, um, I can almost guarantee you that it will not be a slasher movie. Unless some production company or studio came to me and was like, hey, do you want to direct the next I don't know, Thanksgiving part four, you know, whatever. And then I look at where I am in my career and I'm like, oh, would this be a good choice for me to do it? Or am I more established in my career where I can turn that down? Or I don't know, right? Um, you know, it all kind of depends. I'm not saying that I would never, but on my own, like where I am, when I sit down to think of like ideas for movies in the world of horror, it's never slasher. It's never slasher. It's never a slasher villain, somebody with the blade going after a final girl. It's never like that. And, you know, in some ways, maybe subconsciously, I just thought of this now. I have no evidence of this, but may, because there because there are conscious reasons why we made this choice. But maybe there was a, also subconsciously why, maybe that was part of why I chose Black Christmas, you know, to do a sequel to rather than, you know, to do a fan film to Halloween or Friday. Now, there are reasons why I, I there's conscious reasons why I made the choice that I've explained here on the channel. Um, but the original Black Christmas is a, it's a cycle, it's eerie and moody and atmospheric and it's more psychological and theater of the mind. And then you look at the first It's Me, Billy, chapter one, and it, and it plays out that way. That was deliberate. We designed it that way. We wrote it that way. We executed it that way. We crafted it that way. Now, chapter two, things ramp up a little bit. So I think chapter two is a, has a little more going on, um, but it's not like it turns into a flow, a full blown slasher with, you know, blood, guts, and gore and or anything like that. It still stays within its lane. Um, but I, I like films like that. Yeah. Sinister and, and, and the night house and, and, you know, the ritual and, and, you know, the, the first, the exorcist. And I, I, yeah, I just, I'm, once things have been exhausted, once things have been, uh, just over and over, I become, I'm just like, ah, you know, I'm not, uh, I lose interest. And, and I just think now, okay, I, I want to move on. I want to move on and I want to recapture that again, but in a different, you know, in a different, uh, space, you know, I want to capture that feeling and that mood again. And now let's do that again with a different idea, with a different story. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, Lee the Machine Bowers, another generous super chat, amazingly. Uh, for the channel, stay safe, my friend. Thank you, Lee. I really appreciate that, man. You've been so good to the channel. And uh, again, I appreciate that very, very much. Um, Scared Straight Production says, uh, Dave going hard in the paint on It's Me, Billy, to edit, coloring, trimming fat. Uh, we are in post-production right now. Uh, we are uh, assembling the film together. So um, obviously we have a lot of time. And uh, But yes, we, are, we have begun the process of uh, assembling it. And 
so far so good um Jared W says, Dave, would you do a TCM fan film? I would not do a fan film ever again. So uh, like I've said before, um, It's Me, Billy, Chapter 1 and 2 are the, are, are the last fan films that I will be a part of in the capacity of writer, director, and producer. Um, I have no interest in continuing to live in the world of fan films because as somebody, you know, uh, you know, as a filmmaker, you, 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 you can't make a living doing that. I want to be able to, uh, not only get paid, <laughs> I want to be able to, uh, make money from, or the film to make money as well and to be able to seek distribution. So although it's me, Billy chapter one and two are professionally made short films, legit films, um, they are, uh, we have to put the fan film label on it because we don't own the intellectual property. So therefore that simply means that we are not allowed to make money from the movie. We can't put it on Netflix or Hulu. We can't do that. We can't make money from the movie. So, um, so it's, it's, they're professional through and through, but they are technically fan films. So, um, but I no longer want to live in that world. I mean, the amount of work that Bruce and I did on chapter two and chapter one, the amount of work that goes into, you know, development and pre-production. And I mean, it's absolutely insane. You know, when you're, when you're wearing so many hats, you're dealing with the unions and you're dealing with, you know, you're running a business. I mean, we have our own production company now and, you know, and, and you're hiring actors and crew and, you know, catering and craft services and production insurance and equipment rentals and camera rentals and, you know, and taxes. And <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a, it's a big thing, right? So, well, if we're going to do that again, I'm not going to do it with a fan film because I can't make any money. I can't get paid and I can't make any money from it either. And so uh, somebody had asked me, uh, I saw when I was watching back, I forget who it was. Somebody had asked uh, on one of the streams a little while ago if, uh, okay, you can't make any money from the movie and the money you raise, you can't get, but do you get paid? Like, can you pay yourselves while you're working for the week to make the movie? And the answer is no. No, Bruce and I, and we're the only ones, Bruce and I have to work for free, 100%. That's not hyperbolic. That's not me saying, you know, we kind of work for free, but we make a little bit. No, it's literally 100% nothing. We make nothing. Zilch, zero, nada. We are not legally allowed to as the producers of the film. We are allowed to raise money to make the movie and pay the cast and the crew, but we cannot make money from the movie when it's done. We can't put it on Netflix or seek, you know, um, distribution. We, we, we can't suddenly sell all our, you know, Blu-rays on Amazon. We can't do that. So the answer to, no, we had to take a week off. I had to take a week off. Bruce had to take a week off and we had to go and shoot. And we are the only ones on set not making any money. And, uh, so we're, we are truly doing it for the love of the game. We're truly doing it for the love of the art. We're truly doing it because we're passionate about making movies and the product and delivering something cool and special for black Christmas and horror fans. And, uh, obviously there was the gigantic disappointment and setback with Olivia, which I don't want to get into again because I could go on and on and on, but obviously that took the wind out of our sails and was a gut punch and very difficult to deal with. Um, but we, we trekked through as producers, we corrected, we did what we had to do to correct the ship and we moved forward. And that's what you do when you're producing a, you know, a real film. And so, you know, you got, you, you have to do what you have to do. And so moving forward, I don't want to like, if I'm going to do this again, and here we are, we're dealing with unions and actors and crew and insurance and taxes. I'm not, I'm not, hey man, I want to get paid. <laughs> and, and that's, I mean, of, of course, wouldn't you? Of course you would, right? And so it's because of the level we're working at. I'm not saying that, you know, if, if I wanted to shoot a little fan film in my backyard on my phone for five seconds, yeah, fine. Okay, fine. But in terms of like actually making films, real movies, uh, no, I, I, I have no interest because 
the amount of hard work that goes into something like this. It's like, you know, we, we, we want to get paid and we want to, uh, um, uh, for all our hard work, right? But we also want to be able to seek distribution for whatever it is we come up with, whatever it is we make. We want to be able to seek distribution and be able to finally get it out there. You know, maybe get it into a festival, right? Maybe get it into Sundance or I don't know, wh wherever. And maybe it, it, it picks up steam and then who knows? Maybe Netflix, who knows? A few years from now, you guys could be sitting down and watching a, a feature film that Bruce and I directed. How fucking cool would that be? But that can't happen with a fan film, right? Um, so because of the label, because we don't own the intellectual property. Now, because of the quality that we are delivering our fan film, right? We're shooting on cinematic grade cameras. We're using professional actors. You know, we're shooting a real film. Um, could the rights holders come along and say, hey, this is amazing. We love this. Uh, and we we want to work with you and snag it up and, and just sort of package it and release it as is and make it official official? Well, they could do that. Yeah, because the, because the quality is there. Uh, so it's no issue to do that. Or they might say something like, hey, this is wonderful what you've done. This is amazing. Uh, how about we repackage this and, and we give you guys a bigger budget. We'll give you $5 million instead of, you know, a couple hundred thousand that you had to make this. We'll give you five million. We love the template. Why don't we expand this out a little bit? You know, have a you know, few more characters and we'll basically go and reshoot It's Me, Billy, but now with five million dollars and now we can put it into the theater or streaming or whatever. That might, that could happen too, right? You know, you never know. That's a conversation that I'd be open to. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that, yeah, fa fan films, I'm done. I'm done because I, I, uh, you know, I, I really want to see if, you know, as I've said, I've worked a long time in this business, uh, primarily as a professional voice actor for 22 years. And, uh, and now I really want to see if I can make a go as a filmmaker. I don't know how successful I'll be. I don't know where my career will take me, but I'm still young enough, uh, that, uh, you know, I can, you know, I'd love to be able to make a, a, I have like two or three ideas in my head that I'd love to be able to to make. And uh, and so after It's Me, Billy Chapter 2 is out there, and even during post-production, because we have a long post-production thing, Bruce and I might start to sort of dabble into getting our other ideas in order. But once It's Me, Billy Chapter 2 is out there, yeah, it's on to, it's on to original stuff. Uh, anyways, I don't mean to go off on a, on a tangent, but, uh, it's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. And, uh, and when, whenever anybody asks a, a, about that, I always like to take a moment and kind of address it because I know there are a lot of people that are like, Hey, can you do what you did with Billy, but with like Texas Chainsaw or with Halloween or whatever the case is. And it's like, I just don't have, it's, it, it's too much work. You know, I grab, sure. If you want me to grab my phone and a couple of costumes and a couple of my friends, yeah, we can do that in the after, you know, you know, in, in an afternoon, but to deliver the production quality of Billy on another fan film, it's, it's just too much work. It's too much work when you're not getting paid and there's no, there's no, um, uh, you know, there's no future for distribution uh, beyond YouTube or, you know, whatever the case is. Now, again, that's not me saying that I regret anything I've done. We made the choice to make these two films on purpose. We knew that we weren't going to get paid. We knew the amount of work that was ahead of us. So it's, it's not like the amount of work, like we weren't aware of it. We were aware of it. We chose to do it um, for very specific reasons, to build our portfolio, to showcase what we can do, to honor Black Christmas, to do something really special for this great Canadian horror film, one of the most important horror films in the genre. We're Canadian, so who better to do it? You know, all those things are true. We 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 don't regret it. I mean, we we're very passionate about it and we're excited about it and we're so happy that we did it. But moving forward, we're like, okay, if we're going to do this again and again and again and again, yeah, now we got to start, you know, you know, working on original shit that we can uh, really start to take to the next level, you know, in terms of distribution. Um, ba 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 bee. Diddly, diddly, dee. All right. Uh, listen, Warren Armour says, is Bruce doing okay? Uh, yeah, why, why wouldn't he be doing okay? Of course Bruce is doing okay. 
at nighttime says, please do a Halloween fan film. Ain't ever going to happen. So get that out. You'll have to look to the to other people that are doing Halloween fan films. Um, Swifty says, Dave, you should do a McRae live on space. Maybe I will. I have in the past. I have in the past. So I, I might do that. I might do that. Um, okay. Uh, I think we're okay here. All right, folks, listen. That is going to do it for me for this episode of McCray Live. Thank you so much, of course, to my wonderful moderators, Frank Riker, Tab of the Short, Darren Sands, Chris Baber, and Cody Snyder, uh, and Andrew Stevens. Thank you for doing what you guys do. I really appreciate it. Thank you to the Super Chat questions that came in. Thank you to Davey Deathray for gifting five memberships today. I really appreciate that as well. And uh, thank you to all my members as well for being members here on the channel. By the way, this Wednesday, if you're part of level number two, this Wednesday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern, Eastern Standard Time, uh, Horror Movie Nights returns, and we're watching The Slumber Party Massacre from 1982, I believe. I've never seen it, so uh, this will be a first-time watch for me. So if you want to watch along with me this Wednesday night at 7 p.m., uh, join. Uh, you'll have to join uh, my membership and become part of level number two, and then you'll be able to uh, join in on Horror Movie Nights. So uh, make sure you check that out if you can. Um, all right, folks. Uh, again, thank you so much. I uh, really appreciate your support and, uh, you know, just uh, being here. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, jump into the comment section below and let me know your thoughts on Eli Roth's Thanksgiving. I would like to know. So I will be back very soon. I'll be back very soon with another episode or a live stream or a video. Who knows? I don't know, but I'll be back. All right, folks, have a great rest of your Sunday evening and I will talk to you soon. Cheers.